Welcome back to the show. Folks, you know my first guest tonight from The Hurt Locker, Million Dollar Baby, and of course, as Falcon in the Avengers series. He now stars in the new movie, Detroit. Please welcome Anthony Mackie. <laughs> Welcome back. Haven't seen Thank you, you know, for having over me, man. a year. It's great in here. Thanks very much. We keep it spruced up. Right. Keep it spruced up. Now you were saying hi to John as, oh, yeah. you, as you came over yeah. here. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, I know that we talked about the last time you were here that uh, you're from New Orleans. His family's from New Orleans. He grew up in Kenner. Some 504 boys. That's exactly right. Uh. And uh, we talked about getting uh, fried fish at. Gas station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last time you were here. When I'm not working, I'm Fat Mackie. So. Oh, okay, okay. Let's talk about uh, uh, Muscle Mackie because <laughs> because are you are you uh, are you presently in Falcon mode? Are you like uh, Marvel jacked right now? Um, I'm in between. We're in between uh, Avengers three and four, so I'm at fighting weight right now because you never know on these streets in New York, you know. Right. Somebody might come at you, you with a sharpened hot. You got to be ready, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, these nuts about nuts guys out here. <laughs> You, uh, when you were shooting, uh, so you finished Infinity War. You finished shooting that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, now, I understand that you spent uh, the better part of a month uh, making fun uh. of uh, Infinity War co-star Tom Holland. I mean, look okay. at that guy, really? All right. You complained about his squeaky voice? Yeah, it's just a problem. He's a wildly annoying person. <laughs> um... It's, Im it's what, impressive. What is annoying? That's his superpower? Uh, everything, because he's so little. He's like a, uh, he's like a shih tzu. You know? <laughs> and he's just like, it's like, hey, Anthony. And I'm like, Tom, just stop. Take off the spandex. Stop. It's just, it's too much, man. It's too much. How did he take it? Uh, well, you know, he's one of those kids, when you tell him to shut up, he shut up. But when you leave, he start right back talking. It's a, it's, but you're gone, so yeah, it doesn't matter. And you're leaving. He's texting you. Hey, where'd you go? Uh, I, nothing you can tell me about what the Falcon does or anything. Like, can you tell me anything about Infinity War? Like, uh, I kick a lot of. I can't say that. On, I can't say that on here, right? Sure, you can say it. I kick a lot of ass, dog. <laughs> That's what I do. Sure. That's what I do. That's sure. Now, uh, now the new movie in is Detroit. And yeah. it, it's it's about uh, an event that happened in Detroit. It was 50 years ago this year, right? 1967. Yeah. 50 years ago this week. A lot of people don't remember, or aren't aware that this happened. Can you explain to people like what the movie's about? What's the event it's chronicling? Oh uh, well, basically there was a, a bar in New York. I mean, in uh, Detroit called the uh, Blind Pig, and the police went in and raided the bar, uh, looking for an unsuspected. Um, person in the bar, he wasn't there, and they ended up arresting everybody, and it sparked this uprising. Uh, in the 1967, you know, America was a boiling pot. And um, that kind of just took over after they uh, raided this bar and just sparked uh, the De what we knew as the Detroit riots. And, and, and what, how long did they last, and what happened to the city? Uh, the city was obliterated. It was decimated. Um, over 40 people uh, were injured and killed. Over 40 people died uh, during the um, riot. And um, once it was all said and done, the city was just leveled. Um, I mean, some people have said that uh, Detroit has never really recovered from this event, that it's still sort of living in the shadow of 1967. Yeah, but Detroit is the growth uh, place of America, I feel. I think, you know, every... Detroit is truly the rose that grew from concrete. If you look at everything that's happened in, in, in America, every time it's turned that curve and had a great industrial revolution, it started in Detroit, in every aspect of our culture. So, you know, it might be down now, but it's growing and it's showing that we as a country is getting better. And who, who do you play in this movie? Um... I play Robert Green. Robert Green was a Vietnam vet. Uh, just got back to uh, the state. Just got back to America. And uh, like most African American soldiers from Vietnam, they're very disheartened by the way they were treated by the government and specifically the military once they got back to the states. So he was at the Al Algiers Hotel where this movie takes place, and just a man looking for work. Um, and I, th I think we have a clip right here, Jim. It says right there, paratrooper eight years, two deployments. Honorable discharge. This is a fake. No, sir. Mr. Girl? I just met her. 
What's his name? I don't know. His name is Carl Green. Wasn't asking you, I was asking her. You what's his name? You just said what's his name. You're lucky I haven't broken your neck yet. Look, all right, man, I see what you're trying to do. I'm not gonna cause any trouble, okay? But I'm not gonna lie down for you either. Now, based on a true person, that person based on a real character? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the movie, it's Carl Green, but in real life, his name was Robert Green, and um, he was the person who came out and spoke out about what happened at the hotel. He was the first person to speak up and uh, talk about the injustice that was going on during the uh, uprising in Detroit. Now, 50 years later, um, there's still a strained relationship between uh, the police and the African American community in in a lot of cities. Yeah. Would, making this movie, does it did it? teach you anything or did you learn anything about the situation uh, today? Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. There's this great thing that we have as a generation that's been lost called uh, communication. Uh, <laughs> and it's really an art form. And, you know, I went, to art, I went to acting school for four years at Juilliard to learn how to listen. And I feel like now so many people, you know, so many young men want to yell and talk at the police and so many police want to yell and talk at these young men but neither one of them is hearing what the other person is saying. So if you just stop and listen, um, I think it would be an amazing, it would be an amazing feat for our generation. Well, you, you said again that you went to Juilliard. I was just, I was just wondering, you, you still have a little bit of a New Orleans accent. A little bit. When you first got to Juilliard, did you, I assume you had a thicker one. Oh, I still have a thicker one. I'm just being polite because we're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, it's a class. It's a classic. It's a, it's a it's a classic acting education there. I'm sure. Yeah. You, I'm sure you do the classics there. Were you? Were they, did, did they try to break you of your accent before you could do Shakespeare or something oh, like that? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, going to Juilliard is like working at McDonald's. It's like you are in class all day, every day. Uh, and we would take two to three hours I've never of been speech to that class. McDonald's. Man, it's, <laughs> I mean, you know, not yeah. trying to say where I started my career, but <laughs> boop, 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 boop. the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I did a lot of voice and speech at Juilliard, uh, learning uh, from the great Edith, Edith Skinner uh -huh. technique. And yeah. was, there, was there a Shakespeare monologue that, that uh, they had you do to break you of your... Uh... My audition monologue was uh, Edmund from uh, King Lear. And uh, it, ironically enough, during my audition, I thought I didn't get in because they laughed in the middle of my audition because I was so bad. Uh, <laughs> But it worked out. I guess I was just country enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you mind, could you give me a little bit of Shakespeare with a New Orleans accent? Oh, wow. Uh... All right, all right. Um, thou nature art my goddess. To thy law my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me for that I am some 12 or 14 moonshines lag of a brother? Wherefore, bastard, where art thou base? I love it. I love it. Thanks, man. Detroit opens nationwide tomorrow. Anthony Mackie, everybody. We'll be right back with Elizabeth Olsen. Stick around.